All right, we've talked about Hooke's law and spring force, um, which was a linear relationship between something's displacement and the the spring constant, which was in newtons per meter. And we saw that if something took one meter, to, took one newton to move two meters, it would take twice that to move four meters. It's a linear relationship. And it's worth noting again that the spring force is always opposite of the displacement. So, if I'm going to actually draw a different scenario, um, I'm going to draw it in the opposite direction. I'm still going to have a block on the surface, just so that the spring is attached to something. And we'll draw our spring off to the left, attached to some wall. All right, now I'm going to displace this thing, some delta x. If I pull it to the right, then I'm going to have a spring force going back to the left, right? The spring force is going to be back to that direction. Well, guess what? If I went through some displacement, that means we did work. So let's calculate that work. Let's figure out how to calculate the work for a spring. The work for a spring, and I'm going to start with the calculus definition, would be equal to the integral of the vector f dotted into the displacement vector. And let's go ahead and call this some um, x initial and some x final. If I wanted to put in the force, it's going to be a minus kx, and it's in the minus i direction, right? It's going back to the left, and my displacement is a sum dx in the i direction, <clears throat> but it's positive. And so what we end up getting is the integral from x1 to x final of minus kx, because we just in this case, we have two light components, i and i, and they just both go together. And we need to integrate that from x1 to x2, or our final position. Um, what we will see is, after evaluation, is that the work done... Sorry, sometimes I use u. u is equal to w. Depends what class we're in. Um, but the work done from 1 to 2 is going to be equal to, and don't forget this minus sign when you use it, a minus 1 half k x 2, so it's second position squared, minus 1 half k s 1 squared. And the order really matters on this one. Um, but I, I see a lot of people have trouble with the work done by a spring, and uh, the language can be confusing. Is the work done by the spring on the block? Is the block doing work on the spring? Is something pushing on the mass causing us to do work on the spring? Well, would, bear with me because when we get to the conservation of energy, we won't have to think about that. The spring, the energy in a spring, or the potential energy stored in a spring is always positive. So I'll just teach you some tricks to, of which side of the conservation energy equation to put it on. And it just it just works so much more beautifully, in my opinion. Uh, we still need to be able to calculate the work done by a spring, though, and this is how we do it right here. Um, notice it's position dependent. Oh, that's an X. It's just position dependent. So... What we're dealing with, with work and energy, I want to say this again, I've said it before, is position or displacement, um, velocities. We're not dealing with time. We don't really care how much time goes by. We don't. Have, we can figure out how much time went by using some other methods, um, but in work, energy, and conservation of energy methods, we, we don't really care about time. 
Um, but position, velocity, or speed, actually. And force. Those three things are going to be able to find out a lot of solutions in a much more elegant manner than just using Newton's Law or just, I don't know, it's just another tool in the toolbox. Um, we're just building up our toolbox is all we're doing. <clears throat> so, if you wanted to calculate the work done by a spring and you knew its initial and final positions, we would go ahead and do this. If you just wanted to know, I'll, we'll see this later, but the potential energy stored in a spring, it's just equal to that one half kx squared, where this is the amount of stretch or compression from its equilibrium position. No plus or minus sign, um, we just put this on whichever side of the equation we want. This goes for um, the potential energy due to gravity, too. Uh, I haven't introduced these yet. We're not, we have to talk about work and energy first before we can talk about the con conservation of energy. But I like giving you a heads up, knowing that the uh, there's a light at the end of this tunnel that makes these problems much simpler. Um, we saw that the work due to lift something up ended up being minus mg delta y, but the potential energy of something is just a, a positive mgh, as long as you're measuring up from what you're calling y is equal to zero. It can be negative, but I'm going to teach you tricks so that we don't ever have to put minus signs on it. So that's the potential energy in a spring. Here's potential energy due to gravity. And uh, in the next video, I'm about to derive the work energy principle. And that's where we get the 1 half mv squared. That's your kinetic energy. That's what our book wanted us to blindly start off and say, okay, hey, kinetic energy is this. Let's solve some problems. Um, that's when I said we got to switch books because we don't need to know what this is to start doing work and energy stuff yet. Um, there's a proper method, in my opinion, to go about teaching these, and this is it. So the next video is going to get into the work and energy derivation for the work energy principle. And we'll see that work causes a change in kinetic energy and this is a definition that you should remember for the rest of your life.